Abenaki, people of the Dawnland. Pre-contact, they were a peaceful tribe with a unique ability to coexist as a whole with no central leader. Settlers described them as being one of the most peaceful groups of natives they had encountered. But when conflict broke out between Britain and France over Abenaki territory, their world was shaken, and over the course of nearly 250 years, their culture was altered and their peaceful coexistence was ended. We begin with the Abenaki creation myth. Legend tells that the Abenaki land was created by the man who made himself, Odzi Hozo. He is depicted as a great being that rose from Lake Champlain, and as he grew, he walked along the land, carving out great pieces, and creating the space between the Adirondack and White Mountains. The language of the Abenaki is Algonquin. Familiar New Hampshire names like Piscataqua, Kachiko, Merrimack, Winnipesaukee, Canaby, Kentucook, Ossipee, Nashua, and Patekaway are all Algonquin. Tribes did not have central chiefs, but had many Sakems or Sagamores, a title which was passed down to the paternal line. Many of the customs of Abenaki tribes are analogous to our preconceived conceptions of Native American life. Most divisions lived in either longhouses, with many families to one house, or in birch bark wigwams. They were hunting and gathering society, and their clothes were those of the quintessential Eastern American Indian, with both men and women wearing animal skins, regardless of social rank. Contact with the Europeans came predominantly with the French, under the command of Florentine Giovanni da Ferrazzano in 1524. He recounted that the tribe seemed accustomed to trade with the Europeans, and this could not have been the very first contact they had with the settlers. The legend of the great kingdom that thrived in Maine grew, and spread across the country to French and English alike. The rumor of fur trades drew French explorer Samuel de Champlain, later known as the father of New France, to settle at the mouth of the St. Croix River in 1604, near a settlement of the Penobscot branch of the Abenaki. At first, the French relationship with the natives was peaceful, and the trade proved to be beneficial to both parties. However, in 1607, de Champlain realized his error in location, and moved across the Bay of Fundy to the more fertile ground of Port Royal, Nova Scotia, and formed the first official French settlement in Quebec. The ambition began a conflict between the Penobscot and the bordering tribe, the Micmac. During the conflict, the French continued to trade furs with both sides. The conflict escalated into a war in 1610, and was eventually won by the Micmac, who captured and killed Bashaba, thus ending the Penobscot attempt to take control of the Micmac land. These two tribes had coexisted peacefully, even relied on each other for trade and assistance before the arrival of the French. Already the settlers were pitting the Abenaki against each other and separating the tribes. The next 150 years, until 1763, entailed the French and the British settlers fighting over Abenaki land. The conflict resulted finally in the British taking back the settlement at Port Royal in 1654 and holding it until 1667. This made it impossible for the Abenaki to receive any help or trade from the French in Acadia. Help also ceased to come from the British in Boston after they succeeded in capturing New York from the Dutch and relocated to Albany. The only assistance the Abenaki now received was from Quebec. Fern had ceased to be a prophet, but help came in the form of a Frenchman, Fern de Castine. He married into the Abenaki in 1660, becoming husband to Madoka Wando, daughter of the current Sachem. The Castines were rivals of the British and convinced most of their tribe to side with the French. The Abenaki became increasingly hostile towards English advancements. By 1660, a huge number of Europeans that had settled in Abenaki land in Canada and Maine, and the number only increased with time. The tribe as a whole was already 50% depleted since the arrival of the settlers. In 1675, under the leadership of Medicom, known to the English as King Philip, the Algonquin joined together to attack the New England colonies. The Jesuits implored the Abenaki to remain neutral throughout the conflict, which they did successfully until 1676, when the settlers lost the war. They retaliated violently at all the surrounding tribes, including the Abenaki, who had remained neutral. This caused the Great Dispersal of 1676, which is the beginning of Abenaki migration forced by the British in southern New England.
1722 saw the beginning of one of the most crucial wars that the Abenaki were involved in, Dummer's War. It lasted for three years and started when Captain Penhallow of Georgetown, Maine, killed three Indians, and so they retaliated by killing a settler. The governor of Massachusetts at the time, Samuel Shuttle, declared war on the Abenaki at that point. Father Rosliss, who was a Jesuit friend of the Abenaki, told them to defend themselves in their land. Shortly after that, Rosliss was killed by a colonial army. In just 1723, there were over 25 raids by the British on Abenaki settlements in Maine and New Hampshire alone. The war finished with the ratification of Dummer's Treaty, so named for the main fort during the war, Fort Dummer, and Abenaki recognized themselves as British subjects. The American poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote his poem, The Battle of Lovell's Pond, about the most famous battle of the Drummer's War. The Indian Citizenship Act of 1924, under the leadership of the New Yorker Homer P. Snyder, assured that the Abenaki, along with all Native Americans, would be recognized as citizens of the United States. This applied to all tribes in every state in the nation except Maine. Maine Abenaki started to gain rights in 1947, when they were allowed to marry outside the tribe without losing their tribal status, and in 1957 gained the right to vote in national and state elections. Although no Abenaki tribe is considered a federally recognized tribe in America, there continues to be legislation created about Abenaki people. Vermont-based Abenaki struggled for 30 years to be recognized as an official minority group in the state of Vermont. Finally, in 2006, they succeeded, aided by the support of Senator Diane Snelling. In New Hampshire, a different approach is being taken. The government is concerned that by giving too much money and too many privileges to the Abenaki, they will only use the money in ways that will worsen the New Hampshire colonies. A bill was discussed in 2010 that said no privileges could be given to the Abenaki that were not given to the average resident of New Hampshire. In Quebec, most of the Abenaki live on Odenac Reserve, a population of Western Abenaki, which is counted to be just under 500 residents in 2006. They have mostly been converted to Catholicism and speak English. In fact, a great number of the Abenaki in Quebec speak English and French and are integrated into Canadian culture, far more than any other section of the Abenaki are at present. Another group of Abenaki Indians in America is the Abenaki Nation of Missisquoi, located in northwestern Vermont. This tribe retains some of its original culture and traditions by making furniture, baskets, and beaded ornaments by hand and selling them to tourists. They also have a special celebration for a holiday called Heritage Day during Memorial Day weekend. In this celebration, Abenaki perform original dances and traditional ceremonies in order to honor their leaders and elders, and to teach children and onlookers what it means to be a Native American. The history of this tribe is not a simple one, nor is it a kind one. It took 250 years of war to turn a united, peaceful, and thriving group of natives into the separated and dispersed group of colonies it is today. Even before the independence of our country, the culture, the customs, and the beauty and magic of the Abenaki was almost destroyed. And despite the valiant attempt of the tribe to regain their status, and perhaps even some of their beauty as a culture, one thing is for certain. The Abenaki will never regain the unique unity and solidity as a tribe. The war was over and the spirit was broken. The hills were smoking. 